before I go into this, I'm going to take a different spin with this. I'm going to take you all more like on a journey through me and how I got to this message, if that's all right with you all. Right, so before I start off, I just have a few questions for everyone to just think and ponder on as we go through this, script, this message. And the first question is, when we come into Christ as babes, still immature, hungry for the word, ready to be taught, do we have expectations for our new life in Christ? All right. The second question is, as holy children, women, men of God, do we think every day will be sunshine? The third question I have is, when faced with a trial or situation, whether it's minor, whether it's major, who do we run to to tell our problems to? The fourth is, where does my relationship stand with God? What is my prayer life like with Him? And the last one is, because we're saints of God, do we feel we're now invisible to hardship in this hacks? And as I take you through this journey of how God brought me through this message, it started when Bishop George came and spoke to us in those three nights revival. And every night after he spoke, I went home and I'd go through my message just to recap on what he taught us and just so I can get a full understanding of what he had said. And each night I was doing the same thing, the same thing. And then the last night when he called me out and spoke, into my life, what get what God gave him, I I then knew that okay, there is another level that God has for me to go, and God's been dealing with me since the summer, anyways, on a particular calling that He has for me. But I wasn't quite sure of what that calling was. I was unsure. He kind of gave me a hint, but I still wasn't where I wanted to be, so I wouldn't understand it. So then that night after He told me. I was like, okay, so I was thinking, I was like, Lord, what is it that you have for me to do? What is that next level? And whatever it is, I'll do it. I want to do it. And then when I thought about it, I was like, okay, I believe God revealed to me what it was. And then I called my mom, and I was like, Mom, I think this is it. And she was like, well, I already told you that. And I was like, well. (laughs) But I had to know for myself, because I knew he was dealing with, with it, with me on it. But I, had, I was unsure, and you got to be sure and very sure what it is that God calls you to do. That's right. So I was like, okay, I think that's what it is. So as soon as I announced that thing out loud, it seemed like the devil just came out of nowhere. Yes. As soon as he realized that's what my calling was, right. it seemed like you get hit with all kind of yes, awesome. Man. And it doesn't have to necessarily be physical stuff. It's like spiritual things. Yes. So then the next day I was getting frustrated because so I was crying out to God. And I was like, Lord, what is it? I want to hear your voice. And I've been asking for that for a while. But I was like, I want everything how like the Word says. I want it exactly how the Word says. So then if I get it like how the Word says, then I know that I have it. I don't have to second guess a question. So I'm like, I'm not hearing him. I'm not, I want to hear his actual voice. That's how I'm thinking of it. So I'm like, God, I'm not hearing you. So I'm getting frustrated at God. And then, and then it seemed like a spirit of depression started hitting me. And I'm just like, what in the world is going on? And I could not shake that thing off. So I came to Noonday Prayer last Tuesday and we prayed. And I felt like I got a little bit of delivery, but it still wasn't enough. It still was still something on me. So then we came back that Tuesday night, and Mother had her night for us, and we all just got on our knees and started praying. And Mom had the children, and that was the night we all was having, like, headaches and stuff. And I was just like, I just need to let go and just call out to God. And as soon as I started calling out to God, I was just, I was like, Lord, just take everything away that I've been feeling, like, I need this delivered, I need it shaped. And he did it, like he, he released everything. And then from that day I realized, I was like, I know God called me to do something. And as soon as you announce things out loud, it's like the devil, he comes and attacks you. And it's not physical, it's spiritual way. And I thank God for revealing that to me. And that's, and through that whole period, that's when God had that Tuesday of noonday prayer before I went to noonday prayer, I, I got into my word. And that's when he revealed his message to me. And my, my message is understanding 
understanding God's perspective. And then my subtopic for that is by understanding, you won't mind going through what you go through. Amen. Amen. And so when he when he told me, I was like, wow. I was like, okay. So I was like, God, help me understand more. So then I recapped and I went to first second for second chronicles, the seventh chapter, the fourteenth verse. So I remember mom told us to memorize it and to keep going over it. So I went there, and I'm going to kind of jump around some. And it reads, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I heal here from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And then when I read that, I was like, okay, Lord, what are you trying to say to me? And then he led me to, to James, the fourth chapter, the tenth verse. And then when I went to James, the fourth chapter, the tenth verse, it said, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. And I'm like, okay, Lord, so you talking about you want me to be humble. But then I went somewhere else. So he's, he's taking me certain places to get me to the topic of what he gave me. So then he led me to Job 22nd chapter, 29th verse. And that reads, When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. And when I read that, I was like, Okay, Lord, you're still telling me humbleness, but I don't understand how it's pertaining to the topic that you gave me. So I was like, what is it? So when I was reading the chapter before this one and I read the chapter after it, it was talking about how Job was going through, he was already going through his test and trial right there. And he had this certain friend called Elias or Elithas. And he didn't give, he was given unwise counsel. Uh And what I wrote from there was, from that particular chapter and verse, I decided to dig deep into the reference to this verse into my study Bible, and I really understood what it was talking about and found that during this period of Job's struggle, he had an uneducated spiritual friend. And how many of y'all know that we can have friends that are in Christ, but they're spiritually uneducated. They think they do a lot of this, 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 talking, but there's nothing behind what they're saying. So it's like all you're getting is just a bunch of words. But you're not, they're not feeding you what, no spiritual nothing in that. So I call it an uneducated spiritual friend. And, and that led, that was leading Job to believe that Job had done something sinful for God to punish him. Now, Job had sense enough to disagree with his friend. He did. But it did spark Job to question God. And when he started questioning God, he was feeling as if God treated him unfairly. And Job was righteous before God. And so he didn't understand why God would bring him about so much turmoil in his life. And this is when God started to reveal to me understanding God's perspective. When we plan how we want things to go in our lives, God's plan is the only one that's going to be in operation. When we forget...